Hello children, how are you all? Hope you all are fine and doing well. Dear children, in a previous class of fourth chapter, we discussed what is a moment of force, what is a couple, and what is the principle of moments. And after that, we discussed about what actually equilibrium of bodies and types of equilibrium. There we discussed about static equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium, and there we discussed the conditions when a body is in equilibrium. So today's session, we are going to discuss about center of gravity. Children, it is a very, very small topic, very interesting and moreover, it's a very, very easy. It's, I mean, it's a, a scoring marks in this topic is a very, very easy. So in this session, what are we going to discuss? So first we will discuss what actually center of gravity and which factor does it depend? And the uh, center of gravity of, you know, few bodies might be regular bodies. If it is an irregular body, then how can we calculate? I mean, uh, how can we calculate the center of gravity of regular bodies? And how can we calculate the center of gravity of irregular bodies? Can the center of gravity be always situated uh, inside of the material only or outside? So then if so, uh, what are the conditions? So these are the things which we are going to cover in this session. So first, before going to discuss, before going to learn what actually center of gravity is, children, let us recall once again the impact of the gravitation force on bodies. So what happens, children, if you will consider any object near the earth's surface, near the earth's surface, for suppose, let us take here is an object. It is an object and it has some mass. Then what happens? Each and every object is pulled by the gravity. So, every object is pulled towards the, towards the center of the earth. So, that uh, due to gravitation, force of gravity. So, due to that only, there will be a weight. So, any object you can take, Jason. What is the main reason for the weight of an object? So, it is undoubtedly, it is a force of gravity. Just force of gravity is existing so that there will be some weight. So here, strictly we are talking about the object. So there will be a force of gravity. So there will be some weight for each and every object near the earth's surface. Now dear children, don't you think that object is made up of with the atoms, that is the particles. You can say atoms, particles, water it may be. So and each and every particle has some mass. As each and every particle has some mass, definitely each and every particle is pulled by the gravity. As each and every particle is pulled by the gravity means what? Each and every particle has some weight and which will act vertically downwards. So this is a basic point in order to understand what actually center of gravity. So what we will do is that dear children to make uh, our discussion more easy uh, to understand our concept in easy manner. Let us consider one object. Look at here. Let us consider here is uh, let me take here is an object. So for sake of our convenience, I am taking regular body just to understand only. So it is not compulsory, children. It is not compulsory. You may get a wonder, sir, why are you taking the object like a scale, rectangular in shape? Oh, it's not that. It is not compulsory to take regular body only. If we this concept we can understand with the help of irregular body also. But the thing is that to make concept easy and clear and comfortable. Okay, fine. Now, dear children, let us say, okay, it is a regular body, na? So it should be. Okay, so just think that, think that a mass is distributed uniformly in this case, mass is distributed uniformly. Now what are we going to do is that, so let us take a here few, uh, let us consider, let us consider some particles and let us name it. So let us say it is particle A and uh, it is particle B and here is particle C and here is particle D, particle D. So now this particle A, B, C, D, they have certain mass. So due to that, what will happen dear children? The weight will act vertically downwards. Now let us suppose here, the weight of the particle A, let us say it is a W1, which is acting vertically downwards. It is a W1, okay. Whereas the weight of the particle B, it acts vertically downwards. Did you learn whatever is the particle which you can take? See, it is not compulsory to take all in a 
a horizontal line you can take a top bottom side corner anything is okay just as i said that just for sake of our convenience that's it so it is considering the particle position is not important the concept is very very important okay fine so now the weight of the uh, let us say particle c is acting vertically downwards let us say it is a w3 w3 so or else we can say it is a wa weight of the particle wb is the weight of the particle b wc is the weight of the particle d sorry c and here is wd let us say the weight of the particle d now the thing is that eh, children so here each and every particle is pulled by the gravity so obviously what will happen here, you know the weight will be acting vertically downwards and here the point is that eh, children just imagine a situation where this object is in your hand is in your hand now the small thing is that can you balance that particular object let us say scale okay now by keeping your finger at a point here like this like this can you balance no you cannot balance just you try just you try can you balance by keeping it a b c d just you try to uh, what a make like try to balance this object by keeping your finger at a point a at a point b at a point c it's not that children when you try to put your finger at a point a and b and when you try to balance it definitely it won't be balanced and rather what happens you know it will try to rotate in this clockwise direction clockwise direction if you try to balance by putting your finger at a point a and b whereas if you try to balance the uh, object by putting your finger at a point and uh, c and d definitely what will happen you know this body will try to tilt in this direction that is in a anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction but dear children let us consider a point a particle or point here so i am naming it naming it as a g hey you may get one doubt sir after a b c d e must come f must come j it's not that okay so it is not compulsory to take uh, alphabets in order so just you will come to know that why i am taking g also so here is a particle g i have considered one particle g or else a point g where i have considered one point now here also what will happen you know weight will act no doubt about it here also at this point also some weight will be acting vertically downwards but dear children now if you try to if you try to balance this object balance this object by putting your finger at this point i can say mid point example for example if it is a 100 cm object so this point is taken at a 50 cm this point is taken at 50 cm now try to balance that particular object by putting your finger at a 50 cm can we balance yes now we can balance now we can balance. let me show you dear children for suppose here is object let us can this object now a b points are uh, for me it's right side okay now for me right side and uh, uh, c d or left side for example if i'll put my finger to balance it what will happen children it will rotate like this it will rotate like this right on the side here this point no it is not balanced no whereas if i put finger here no it is not balanced it is not balanced so somewhere else you know if i'll put something like this now it is not balanced little bit hey it is balanced it is balanced so now what i'm saying is that this is a point g which i have selected this is a point g which i have selected now at this point at this point so by keeping your finger you can balance that object dear children this point only scientifically we can call it as a center of gravity and we will represent with the letter g so that is the reason why i have taken why i have chosen letter g so at this point by putting our finger at a center of gravity of this object we can balance it but the thing is that how it is possible how we are able to balance it are we doing any magic no it is not that then how can we define the center of gravity dear children in order to understand the center of gravity concept let us recall let us recall once again the concept of principle of moment children here is any object if it is pivoted at a point here somewhere o so that here force f1 is acting here force f2 is acting okay such way that here is some perpendicular distance what it may be 
then this force will try to make it to rotate in anti clockwise direction this force will try to make it to rotate in a clockwise direction so that there will be anti clockwise moment of force and a clockwise moment of force now here f1 into r1 will be what anti clockwise moment of force whereas f2 into r2 is what clockwise moment of force if both are equal what will happen dear children definitely this body this meter rule is balanced it is in equilibrium so clockwise moments of force are equal to the anti clockwise moments of force now this is the same concept we are going to apply to this in order to understand what actually center of gravity is now children look at here if you can see here this force uh, weight wa will try to make it rotate in this direction no doubt about it and this also in this direction which means what this w and wb it will try to produce anti clockwise moments of weights try to understand so let me write here anti clockwise anti clockwise moments anti clockwise moment moments whereas wc will try to make it to rotate in a clockwise direction even wd also will try to make it to rotate in anti clockwise direction only so the dear children these two children oh, there won't be any four particles again i'm saying you there are like crores of part n number of particles will be there but to understand a concept we have chosen four particles and we are discussing this is a point which you have to keep in your mind okay fine so these two are like uh, you know weights of the particles will try to uh, make it rotate in a clockwise direction means what will produce clockwise moment of force. moments of weights now dear children now what happens if this clockwise moments of weights let let me write here clockwise moments of weights it is clockwise moments of weights what happens if will be equal so it's very 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 important this is a point actually so what happens if anti clockwise moments of weights or equal to the clockwise moments of weights then what will happen that body is balanced that body is balanced but if you can notice here this is happening only in the case of point g only so the point g about which the sum of the anti clockwise moments of weights or equal to the clockwise moments of weights of all the particles of the body then that particular body that particular point sir the particular point only we can call it as a center of gravity i repeat once again so what is the center of dear children about this point if you can see so clockwise moments of weights are e equal to the anti clockwise moments of weights so it is balanced it is a balance so that point that point on we can call it as a center of gravity let me repeat once again definition the point about which the sum of the anti clockwise moments of weights are equal to the clockwise moments of weights of all the particles children i am not talking about four particles all particles of the body is called center of gravity and another way also we can discuss for example is a anti clockwise moments of weights equal to clockwise moments of weight then if you can bring this clockwise moments of weight what are left side or anti clockwise moments of weights are right side then what will happen then dear children about this point the algebraic sum of the moments of weights will become zero okay like this also we can discuss so the point about which the algebraic sum of the moments of weights of all the particles of the body is zero then that particle that so that point that point is called center of gravity so in fact dear children in a single word we can say that we can consider that the entire weight of the body is considered to act at this point so whenever we consider the center of gravity concept and based on center of gravity concept every object is considered as a point object where the entire weight of the body is considered to act actually considered to be act actually so this is what actually center of gravity so let me repeat once again dear children the point about which the algebraic sum of the moments of weights of all the particles of the body is zero then that point is called actually center of gravity okay children hope it's very clear that's fine now dear children uh, let us try to discuss on which factors does the center of gravity depends 
So children is very 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 important examination point of view. You know, actually children based on this topic, you know, there are only three questions. The first question they may ask you define what actually center of gravity, and the second question they may ask you based on the factors on which center of gravity depends. So let us see here. So here, center of gravity depends on the following factors. Depends on. So it's very, 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 very much important. So the first one is that, the first one is that it depends on shape of an object. Shape of an object. Shape of an object. Very, very, very much important. Then how can we understand? How can we say that center of gravity depends on shape of an object? So to understand this better way, to understand this better way, let us consider each children a thin wire. Let us consider thin wire. So thin wire. But as it is a thin wire means it is not that hollow and it thin means what? The solid. Okay, now try to understand. Though it might be very very thin. Okay, now but it is not hollow. Don't think that it is a hollow by seeing this diagram. It's not that. It is completely filled with the mass. Mass is distributed along along the length. It's very important. For this, dear children, where the center of gravity will be lying. So for this actually thin wire, dear children, the center of gravity will be lying at a midpoint of its length. Very very important. So midpoint of its length. For example, it is hundred centimeters of wire. Then center of gravity will be lying exactly at this point. So this will be the center of gravity. This will be the center of gravity of this thin wire. Let us say it is a thin wire. Now the thing is that, dear children. So what are the hundred centimeters wire which we have taken? Can we make it in the form of ring? I mean, just take that, just try to make it. Acha, how in our movies, you know, our heroes will be there. Might be Tollywood, Bollywood, whoever it is. You give a big rod, what it may be. During the fight, you know, they'll be bending. Yeah, something like this, they'll be bending. Okay, na. Of course, it is possible in movies only. Okay, na. Fine, of course. In our daily life, also some talented are there. Means we can't say anything. Okay. So in this case, we are not taking any such a uh, what we can say uh, hard rod. Not that. That much we are not strong rod. We are not just. Why we are taking so that we can make in the form of a ring. We can make in the form of a ring. Let us say the same wire is made in the form of a ring. So it will appear like this. Let. So before actually for this ring, children, somewhere else here will be there midpoint means this point will come here. Try to understand. But now for this ring, where the center of gravity is situated, dear children, for this the center of gravity will be here at this point. So it is a ring for this. Center of gravity will be situated at this point. So, which means what here? Same material. We are not changing the nature of the material. Just here, what are we doing? Just we are changing the shape of the object. So, when it is in the form of a wire, dear children, the center of gravity is situated midpoint of its length. But whereas when the same wire is made in the form of a ring, now the center of gravity where it will be exactly it's a geometric center. Exactly the geometric center. Okay, hope it is fine now. Now, uh, acha, you may get a one doubt, sir. This ring, acha, we got one third edge. This ring, what will you, you know? Will cut exactly half like this. Uh, yeah, like this we made. Like this we made. Now, try to understand. Like this we made. Okay, na? Like this we made. Now, do you think that the center of gravity will be lying here only? Just you think, dear children. See. Just we are not changing its position. Everything just we made it into half. That's it. Half or half of its part of the ring is removed actually. Now where the center of gravity will be? Do you think that the center of gravity is situated there only, or it is shifted? So if you want to understand this, we need to understand one more point. It's called actually mass distribution. Richard, mass distribution and the shape of an object. Almost same, almost same. But uh, in, let us uh, what I discuss in depth actually. So here, the second point is mass distribution. How mass is distributed? Okay, dear children. Fine. So to understand this, to understand this, let us take one uh, point. So children, here is, let us say it is uh, hundred centimeter regular body. Hundred centimeter regular body. So where is the center of gravity will be like, dear children, almost for all regular bodies, center of gravity coincides with its geometric center. So for this, where the center of gravity will be lying? No doubt about it. So this is the point. So center of gravity will be lying. Means exactly 50 centimeter. Blindly we can say that. 
okay now let us take one more object so let us take something like this hey what is this <laughs> that's right so it is a irregular body which i have taken but the thing is that each length the length means from one end to another end i am talking it's 100 centimeters it is 100 centimeters try to understand now length of this body is 100 centimeters so in this case exactly center of gravity is situated exactly at 100 or oh, sorry 50 centimeter at point 50 centimeter but here can you say that the center of gravity is uh, like you know exactly at 50 centimeter can you say that so to then how can we say whether it is lying at this point or not just try to make it balance can you balance can it be balanced by putting something like a pivot point at 50 centimeter mark obviously with our comma it's just common sense yes anyone can say that for this we need to have a, a concepts of physics a con a physics knowledge is not needed actually so what happens yes it can never be balanced. It can never be balanced by putting a pivot point at this 50 centimeter mark. Means it will be almost somewhere else here. Almost somewhere else here. See, I'm not saying exactly. So, so here it will be. It is. It might be some uh, 80 centimeter or something like that. Children, it's not exactly. I'm not saying exactly. It will lie. Just an average. I'm taking. It is a 80 centimeter. So this is a where actually center of gravity is lying means dear children it is not compulsory that center of gravity is always like you know should be situated always at midpoint only it it is not that it depends dear children if mass is distributed uniformly children please note on this very very important if mass is distributed uniformly then what happens you know center of gravity coincides with the geometric center if not what will happen you know just try to observe children why do you think that the center of gravity is lying right side of this midpoint the reason is that so this is a point where more mass is distributed more mass is distributed so here we have to make one conclusion that center of gravity is shifted always towards the point where more mass is distributed it's a very 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 important point i repeat once again i repeat once again here the mass is distributed uniformly that's what center of gravity is lying at midpoint but whereas in this case mass is not distributed uniformly so the center of gravity will be uh, there at a point where more mass is distributed okay fine now come back to this point now come back to this point so where does the center of gravity will be lying now in this case before the children so entire mass is distributed along its circumference something like this in a, like this so that it is lying at midpoint but as it is not lying what see as now mass is not, not distributed not completely it is not distributed in all directions only one side is distributed then what will happen your dear children now new center of gravity if before it was g now what happens after removing this part so it may be lying here it may be lying here so it obviously gets shifted why because now here is the mass is distributed so here two points we need to understand children these two points comes actually under we will consider as a you know many cases will take as the same manner but in order to understand just in a depth just we discuss so here center of gravity depends mainly here shape of an object and here mass distribution mass this so this is how actually we can understand the uh, factors on which center of gravity depends clear now children we are going to discuss one important point what is that is that can we say that center of gravity is situated always within the material or it is possible to what uh, uh, situate the like uh, it is possible to for a center of gravity to be situated outside of the material children what do you think just you think and let me know just just you think pass the video and comment your answer what do you think is it possible is it possible or can the center of gravity be situated outside of the material outside of the material completely outside the material then how to understand this one actually so before the digital let us take a small example let us take a, our room only dear children now just you think the situation where uh, acha, now uh, you know where you are sitting just try to observe the shape of that room it might be uh, you know square in shape or maximum rectangle in shape Hey, it won't be like uh, you know uh, like a circular in shape is it possible 
of course depends okay now we can't say that okay so just it, usually it, it is in the form of a square or rectangular in shape then how to calculate the center of gravity of that room where you are sitting where you are sitting simple thing simple what is that simple thing for example here is your room now oh, it's your room my room our room it is okay now that's fine oh, oh, fine so let us see here is it's not a cube or cube or something like that just room just imagine now dear children now imagine a diagonals definitely you know for each and every how many corners will be there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yes eight corners are there for this eight corn means try to join just opposite corners like you know in mathematics we get the diagonals so try to make a diagonals how many diagonals can we make four diagonals we can make so now let us see so from this corner to this corner i make one diagonal okay and whereas from this corner to this corner again i'm making one more diagonal two diagonals okay and uh, you know from uh, this corner to this corner again it is one more diagonal third one so here from here to here so just again i'll make one more Achha, it won't go like this bending it's not that just to show in a diagram just yes, so now look at here this is a point where all diagonals are meeting all diagonals are meeting now the point is that so of course this point only is the center of gravity of our room actually center of gravity so how can we uh, find out the center of gravity of our room where we are living so make a diagonals so obviously they all diagonals will be meeting that point we can consider the center of gravity that's fine now dear children the question is that in this case is the center of gravity is situated within or outside within or outside so here only one confusion will come as you know we all are talking we are learning we are communicating through english language you know just will think so within outside so for example now we are within the room we are within the room and when we go out of the door we can say it's outside of the room so now we will think in that manner and as we are staying within center gravity is within so we can say that we can say that center of gravity is situated within the room but my dear children it is a wrong answer wrong answer so it is not don't think in terms of english don't think within means not being inside outside means not being out it's not that actually so we have to think dear how we have to think dear in this case actually center of gravity is situated within center of gravity is situated within the body no this is wrong then what is the correct answer it is situated outside it is situated outside so what is this so concept called outside inside children very simple so the point where center of gravity is situated if their mass is distributed then you can say that is it is within the body if mass is not distributed so it is outside of the material that's it for example i where we are saying in a rooms dear children do you think that inside complete mass is distributed i mean so if you can see the walls they are completely made up of with a, a concrete now so when you can say that the center of gravity of your room is lying within the room within the particular room if your room is completely filled if complete mass is distributed so it is not so so here we can say that as it is hollow so children for hollow objects for hollow objects center of gravity will be lying outside of the material now let me take one more example here let us take a ring let us take a ring so here is for ring dear children look at here so here is the situation so this is the center of gravity this is the center of gravity of the ring for the center of gravity of the ring dear children for this ring do you think that the center of gravity is lying within the body or outside the body you cannot say that still it is lying within the body no it is outside why the point where center of gravity is situated there mass is not there is no mass there is no mass so this is a very very important to understand so only single point the point where the center of gravity where it is situated if their mass is distributed there you can say that center of gravity is lying within the material if the center of gravity is lying where the mass is not distributed then you can say that center of gravity is situated outside of the material so we can say that center of gravity can be situated within the material or outside of a material it depends how mass is distributed how mass is distributed so this is what actually the important point 
for example digital let us take uh, you know yeah uh, to give you more clarity let me take this best example see that these all are not rings just uh, just imagine a situation you know is not a rings so uh, rather it is a uh, hollow sphere it is hollow sphere let us take here is hollow sphere and here is solid sphere solid sphere means something like this you know solid means uh, so just just is completely filled so just you think that both are, both radius is same both radius is same it, it is like a, a hollow sphere or solid sphere both radius is same so definitely here the center of gravity is lying at its geometric point here also center of gravity lies lying at its geometric point only but what is the difference in the case of hollow sphere inside mass is not distributed only mass is distributed on its surface only but whereas in the case of solid sphere children the center of gravity is distributed even inside because it's completely solid inside complete mass is distributed so the point where this g is lying there also mass will be there so in this case of solid sphere g is lying within the body within within the body whereas in the case of hollow sphere the center of gravity is lying outside of the body outside of the body clear okay so take this point this is it so in order to understand this concept you better think about hollow sphere and a solid sphere then you will get a concept okay fine so this is what actually center of gravity now dear children uh, we will see uh, like you know center of gravity is a regular body is examination point of view examination point of view we will see the center of gravity of a few objects so here let us take a ring okay let us take it is a ring okay na here is a point where center of gravity meant center of you should write in exam so center of gravity the where it will be lying it is situated it is geometric center you should say that okay fine acha for this ring then how can we you may get a one doubt sir how can we find the center of gravity of a given ring so simple it is so dear children so just make a perpendicular lines along its like you know diameter along its diameter just uh, make means make a two diameters for this ring oh it is going somewhere else it will come it has to come okay sir meeting will be the center of gravity of that ring now let us take a square lamina yes. plate which is in square in shape so here is square lamina even you can take a rectangular lamina so both are same so for this make a diagonals how we made for our room yes we did not make just we imagine diagonals okay now this is a point so the point of intersection of diagonals will be the center of gravity of this uh, square lamina next dear children let us take triangular lamina now make triangle lamina means the plate which is in triangular shape let us say it is a point a so b it is c now dear children for this you cannot say that let us make a diagonals no you can't say that so here for this dear children just make a perpendicular line to this bc exactly it should be perpendicular let us say it's e okay now again from this point c let us make one more perpendicular line okay let us say it's a d okay now and again from this point let us make one more perpendicular line let us say it is f so now dear children this is a point of center of gravity this is center of gravity that is fine but what so what we call ae dc fe these all are called medians this is very 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 important very very so in a what of many times here what is happening whenever uh, they ask the question where is the center of gravity of triangular lamp situated many children are writing that simply at its center it is geometric center no you cannot write like that so it is not accepted then what we have to write you have to write that the point of intersection of medians i repeat once again i repeat once again where the center of gravity of triangular lamina is situated children it is situated at a point where the medians here a e d c b f we are, these all are called actually medians so the point of center of what are the point of intersection of medians will be the center of gravity okay fine now let us take one more so either you can take the children uh, cylinder so you can take a hollow cylinder or solid cylinder acha you may get a one doubt 
So in a both cases, you know, in the case of hollow cylinder, we can say that center of gravity is situated outside of the material. Whereas in the case of the center of what a, a solid cylinder, the center of gravity is situated within the material. That is fine. So apart from that, we are trying to find out the position of the center of gravity. Now concentrate. We are not thinking whether it is a within or outside. We are trying to find out the point where center of gravity is situated. So dear children, for this, so this will be the what actually? Uh, axis of rotation about which it can be rotated axis of rotation so where the center of gravity is lying for this uh, cylinder mean the chillen so exactly midpoint of the axis of rotation please write on us so here this is a point the midpoint of the uh, what we can say axis of rotation of the cylinder will be the center of gravity okay fine okay. chillen now we are going to discuss a very 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 important uh, thing where uh, many children may get confused and which is very very important for examination point of view. What is that? We are going to discuss about a cone. Now dear children, just uh, you know, uh, take, it's not like uh, this one, you take you know, uh, asha, you know, birthday cap, general will be wearing a birthday cap, you know, birthday cap, okay na, how they will be during you know, birthday parties. So children will be wearing, of course, nowadays you know, everyone is wearing. But it looks uh, pretty good uh, when uh, children wear that and they'll celebrate their birthdays. So just you take that actually. So what is the shape of that birthday, birthday cap region? Obviously cone. Now uh, we, let us take one more thing with the same height I mean to say. Same. Both shapes seem to be same. But it is not a birthday cone. Just think you know Mehendi. Mehendi cone you can take. Hey did a song na? Mehendi laga ke rakna. Okay that's fine. Okay dear children. That Mehendi cone you know. You can take that Mehendi one will be there, you know. So that is also same shape, that is a cone only. So the similarity between these two is that each children, both are in same what we can say shape, that is a cone. Then what is the difference? What is the difference? Come on, come on, come on, think. Think what is the difference then? Children, what do you think that? See, the similarity I said that both are uh, both shape is same. But the difference is that each children, here instead of this birthday cap, mass is not distributed, it is hollow. It is completely hollow. But whereas this cone, hey, Mehendi is there, na? Of course, when you give this uh, Mehendi cone to the, you know, girls or women, then definitely within a few, a few minutes, it will become empty. Again, it will come back. So, just joking. So, here, the thing is that, HLN, so it is completely inside, Mehendi will be there. So, what I mean to say is that, HLN, here inside, mass is not distributed. In the case of a birdie cap, when the case of Mehendi, this one cone, inside, mass is distributed. But the question is that, so, HLN, if, if these two are of same height, let us say, let us say, these two are of same height, let us say the height is h. Children, this height h we will measure generally from the base in this concept. Okay. Now, you can't say that the center of gravity for this, both may lie at the same height. No, that is a wrong concept. First, let us see where the center of gravity will be situated. Then we'll think the reason for that. So, children, so... Here, for example, if it is the height, let us take vertical height. So here also this one. That's fine. Okay. Now, dear children, in the case of so this what this what actually I can say it is hollow cone. It is it is hollow cone. You can't say hollow cone. It's not that. So it is just hollow cone. Hollow cone. Whereas it is solid cone. It is solid cone. Now, dear children. For this hollow cone, children, the center of gravity is situated h by 3 from its base, h by 3 from its base. Whereas for solid cone, the center of gravity is situated h by 4 from its base. Children, we know that h by 4 is less than h by 3, which means what? In the case of solid cone, the center of gravity is situated near to its base, near to its base. So what is the reason why it is lying near to its base? Children, already we discussed one point. Center of gravity depends on the mass distribution. So children, as it is hollow, but here mass is distributed and more of detail, more amount of mass is distributed near the base. Right to understand. Now just, got na? Just recall that point we discussed. Uh, 
so uh, central load is shifted towards a point where more mass is distributed so in this case this in the case of solid cone more mass is distributed near the base so that the center of gravity is shifted but when you are writing an exam you must write like this you can't say uh, where is the center of gravity of hollow cone is situated you can't say just h by 4 or h by 3 it's not that so you should say that h by 3 from its base it's very very important writing this is mandatory whereas in this case h by 4 from its base from its base so dear children these are the uh, very 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 important few very very important in examination definitely they may ask you just please copy it just copy dear children very important and you better use scales or something you know to make it a properly okay copy it copy it yes now children i have one question uh, if you can dear children as we discussed that in the case of halo objects the center of gravity is lying outside of its material and almost in the case of uh, you know what we can say uh, solid like you know objects uh, center of gravity is situated within the material that is fine but the, my question is that dear children can you say that always always center of gravity be situated within the material of uh, you know solid objects can you just you think what do you think dear children what do you think do you think the children let me ask you the question so is it is it compulsory that center of gravity is situated within the material in the case of uh, what we can say solid bodies not hollow it might be regular or irregular i'm not talking that it's a regular body regular just you think so children hey let us uh, let us take a case of a uh, uh, you know boomerang what is that you know in a uh, action movies you can see our hero just will throw and what will happen it will go to wheel viren it will hit fat 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 again it come back to our hero only okay now so that so it is in this shape actually so let me you know even that you can see on picture also here okay so almost it is in this shape now it is in this shape something like this something like this i'm not sure okay like this so now for this dear children for this where the center of gravity is situated where the center of gravity is situated so you can't say that here no it is wrong dear children so for this actually the center of gravity almost it is situated here this is a point where center of gravity is situated so it is not compulsory it is not a hollow one it is it is not hollow it is completely just filled here mass is distributed completely mass is distributed so it is not compulsory that to say uh, you know center of gravity should lie within the material but dear children according to our syllabus according to our syllabus just we are talking we have only regular bodies so in the case of regular solid objects maximum means maximum cases the center of gravity is situated within the material only so we are talking uh, in terms of our, uh, you know uh, subject the syllabus the scope of the subject we are talking we have about what we can say uh, uh, what are regular bodies only which we have okay so uh, so far we discussed how can we calculate the center of gravity regular body as a children then how can we cal calculate the center of gravity of irregular body for suppose like this one body is there something like this one body is there then how can we calculate you can't say that here or here here simply we can't say that but how to calculate the center of gravity of such a bodies so for this dear children first let us make some holes let us say it is a a it is some b it is some c it is some d so it is not uh, you know compulsory you should make a two three four but more than three three is mandatory so that is very easy to get two with the with the tools we can write but uh, three is a uh, very good actually now what we have to do dear children now after making the holes let us take a plumb line actually plumb line let us take and this should be suspended from either point okay now with the help of that plumb line to a retard stand okay now and make it suspend and of course definitely sometime it will oscillate and let it come to the rest position let it come to the rest position so in that rest position dear children what do you do just try to make a line along the plumb line try to make a line okay now so again means you repeat means with a each at each and every point which we considered through what each and every point it must be suspended so that along that plumb line we can make lines okay now so what will happens all lines 
okay it may be like here somewhere here you have taken one point here e also so it may come here so then what will happen all these lines which we made with the help of plumb line the children so all are meeting at a point so this point the point where uh, all these lines are meeting will be the center of gravity so this is how actually we discuss okay children with this uh, we completed the center of gravity concept just once again recall what we have discussed in this session the children we discuss what actually center of gravity children once again let us re recall the definition recall the definition so what actually center of gravity so the point about which the algebraic sum of the moments of weights of all particles of the body is zero is called actually center of gravity and then we discuss about the factors on which center of gravity depends the children center of gravity depends on shape of an object and uh, it also depends on mass distribution and it is not compulsory that center of gravity be situated always within the body so it can be situated outside of a material also the best example is a ring uh, halo sphere halo cone and halo cylinder all these things okay then we discuss the center of gravity of a few regular objects which are very very important okay dear children so with this we have done in next session dear children we are going to discuss a beautiful topic a very important examination point that is the circular motion and we are going to talk about the centripetal force and the centrifugal force okay dear children just keep on preparing well for your examination all the very best